Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha. And uh, this morning I'm having Greek yogurt with almond butter. And over the last month or two, I have upset a lot of extremists in different fad diets uh, with my positions. Mainly vegans, which are an extremist. Uh, carnivore, which are an extremist. Of course, it'll cover a lot of keto people, which are also extremists. And then on top of it, uh, I think some of the, if it fits your macro zealots, the extreme ones fit in there also. And I would define those as the ones who say that you have to have junk food or who say you can't define junk food or dirty food or whatever. You can't, you can't define there's no such thing. Hey, that's an extreme ridiculous position too. Those are all extremist positions uh, that push very extreme diets. And what I'm telling people is that if you're looking for optimal health and you're looking for optimal athletic performance too, that a whole foods diet, okay, a whole foods diet based around a wide variety of animal and plant products is the way to go. And there needs to be diversity in your diet, right? And outside of that, a, a lot of the rest of it doesn't matter as long as we're getting our, our micronutrients. And if you don't know if you are, go plug them into Crown Hobbit. And I'll tell you right now, barring things like vitamin D and K2, which you really can't get in food, uh, you can get K1, which you still count it as vitamin K. A balanced diet means you should be able to go plug into something like Crown Hobbit, what you eat every day before any supplements are added. Right? And I'm not even that wild about protein powders. A lot of people say they're not a supplement. They're food. Eh. But who cares? Plug all that in, and if you don't hit the recommended amounts on every single vitamin and mineral and fiber and your essential fatty acids, uh, your diet could use some work. It, it probably is lacking somewhere. Right? And what do I mean by whole foods? People mean whole grains, and well, maybe I could argue they're not even necessarily the best, but here's what I mean by whole foods. Lean, lean animal source proteins, that would include meat and dairy. Up to a certain extent, you get away with some fat in those too. A couple eggs a day isn't gonna kill you. A couple of whole eggs isn't gonna be a problem. One glass of whole milk is probably not a problem. It's when your saturated fat gets too high, and we do need to, to watch saturated fat. There is an upper threshold to where it does become harmful to health. In the long term, and any of these people say, well, LDL doesn't matter. Mm, the research is saying you guys are not right. That's a crazy keto position. I used to think there was some truth to it, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It, it's actually problematic. What other foods would we then include? Fruits, vegetables, nuts. Those are, those are your big powerhouses. We could argue legumes in there too. All right. Remember we had a study a while back and I put up this big study that had been done and people argued and it showed that people who eat the most meat, dairy, fruits, nuts, vegetables had the lowest rates of cardiovascular disease, period. But that included meaning you're eating a diversity of those things. It didn't mean that people who just drink a gallon of milk a day, if that's all they ate, which nobody does that. Or people who are, who are eating just exclusively meat because it said all of those things, the variety. And it didn't necessarily mean fatty cuts of meat. Because again, saturated fat intake. They had the lowest rates of cardiovascular disease. Start looking at cancer rates. Dairy is not associated with cancer at all. And when you really look closely at the meta-analysis, leaner cuts of meat really aren't either. All these other foods reduce cancer. Fruits, nuts, vegetables, they've reduced cancer across the board because, again, antioxidant status, polyphenols, phytonutrients, all this stuff adds up. Here's the other thing we come to with everything I listed on the ladder. Gut health. Gut health will affect you as an athlete, by the way. Having a diversity of fruits, vegetables, 
and nuts, you know, but fruits and vegetables primarily, having a diverse amount of them will give you a more diverse gut biome. It increases your gut health tremendously. That affects the way you digest and absorb foods. It will affect your immune system. It will affect your recovery. It will even affect your metabolic rate. Okay. It affects even things like insulin sensitivity. But that matters a lot. So having that diversity is important. Having that's important. Now, people say, what about macros? Not that important. Protein matters. What's our target protein we shoot for? 1.6 gram, 1 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. For me, that's about 160 grams. Preferably most of it coming from animal source proteins because plant proteins have a lower bioavailability. They're an inferior source of protein any way you break it down. That would assume a pretty good chunk of that's animal protein. But you don't need huge amounts of it. You don't have to eat two pounds of meat a day to hit anything like that. Not a problem. But they hit that protein number. So we, that is what we need as strength athletes, lifters, athletes in general. That's what we need. That is our optimal. And for many people, that's above optimal. It gives them wiggle room. What about carbs and fat? They don't matter that much unless you have specific needs. And if you're eating all of those, those foods, you're going to have a bit of both. Okay. They don't matter that much. They're largely interchangeable. If you eat more fat and lower carbohydrate, and again, lower carbohydrate, I don't think anyone should be going under 100 grams. You're going to burn more fat. It's not going to mean you're going to burn more body fat, but your just body's going to shift to burning more fat for fuel. If you eat more carbohydrate and the fat goes down, you're going to burn more carbohydrate for fuel. They're interchangeable. We'll say, what about training fuel? Well, if, you, if you're doing very, very large amounts of GPP, you might need more carbohydrate. I'm not going to disagree with that. If you're doing serious endurance work, you're going to need to jack your fat intake up. Okay. And you guys know what I mean by serious endurance work. If you're doing 30 minutes of cardio a day and you're lifting for two hours, this is not what we're talking about. You can interchange these based upon mood, satiety, how you feel, preference. It's not going to matter that much. So don't take your carbohydrate too low and don't take your fat too low. You're going to develop dietary deficiencies. Come back over to the hitting those optimal intakes. And then you need it for the absorption of vitamin A, E, K, D. You have to have it. If fat gets too low, the problem. So how much is too low? I don't know maybe 0.3 grams per pound of body weight. That's about 0.6 grams per kilo of body weight. Someone like me probably shouldn't go under 60 grams of fat. Not optimal. We don't have a, an exact number that we know. That's an estimate by the best, the best dietitians and uh, sports dietitians out there. Okay, but that's, that's how we would define a healthy diet. And me personally, what is it I'm promoting these days? Lean, pro, lean animal proteins, and it needs to include dairy. I don't think dairy should be optional. Fruits, vegetables, nuts. And, you know, we could probably throw in legumes. Maybe you could throw in whole grains. I, I think the others are better than whole grains. Based upon the, the data I've seen. All right? I think they're a better choice. But those are still whole foods. And I'm not saying white rice doesn't work for a lot of athletes who need tons of calories. All right, that's why stuff like the vertical diet works really well. I use it very successfully to bulk. We could argue that plant fats could replace that just as easily, those calories. What I mean by that, natural peanut butter, avocados, things like that. Again, I'm not telling people to eat a bunch of oils. I'm talking about eating whole foods, minimally processed foods. There's going to be some processing. But you guys know what whole foods are. Let's not act like we don't. And you shouldn't be 
working junk into your macros. I don't think that that's wise from a health perspective. I don't think that's good. I think you can have a cheat day every now and then. Right? You have a cheat day every now and then. You have a few of them. They shouldn't be comprising a significant chunk of your time, though. Right? I average, for, even though I put mine together for me, I get about one cheat day out of 10. So, you know, 90% of the time, pretty much compliant to this. Right? I think it's pretty reasonable. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.